Hello everybody, welcome back to Tyranny! In the last episode, things did not go according to plan. We accidentally blighted the land by going through with the disfavored ritual according to, uh, or regarding Karen's essence, and it seems like I can do something with this. Remove a fragment of cane. I mean, sure. How much can I grab? Removing this vital will cause the remainder of Karen's essence to dissipate. I mean, which one do I want to take, though? Is there gonna be like a... Ah, wits from that one. I get resolve from that one. Might... Finesse... Vitality... And I guess this one is quickness. What do I want to pick up? Am I going to get the buff on cart? Is the uh, question here. I mean, I could always go with more wits. Which one was wits? There we go. Take head fragment. Alrighty then. That was kind of anticlimactic. But also, there appears to be stuff to loot here. Probably leftovers from the battle let's put that on as well and i think we're done here we should go back to uh graven ash to report in i swapped ed back in because kills and shadows wasn't really working out it was a big mistake to bring her to the um stone stalker tribe lands gotta say only pretty much earned uh, fear from her not much loyalty but it was worth a shot. And... We have something to talk about with Beric. What's up? It is rare enough that anyone has the opportunity to proclaim an edict, much less break one. How are you holding up, Fatebinder? The arcana can seem overwhelming at times, but I think I have the fortitude to maintain. I'm glad to hear it. Since you seem more comfortable with magic than I had credited, I'll try not to worry myself over your well-being. Just thought I'd check in. What cool. Can I do for you? All right. By the way, a small tidbit. I did some talking with Beric off camera as well as well as a verse, and it turns out they're actually half siblings. There's a twist for you. But they kind of still hate each other. All right, Graven Ash. Fate Bonder. I felt something indescribable pass through me just before your arrival. Emotions of great rage and pain, followed by a moment of lingering sorrow. I suspected something has been lost, and Teratus herself screams at the essence absence. I understand that both of the spires jutting up from the ruins of Azure are now under your control. It would seem that impossible feats are no mystery to the likes of you. Impressive, Ortunos minion. Do not allow yourself to be swept up by the esteem and glory of this achievement. Were you a soldier of mine, I would temper your pride with modesty. The disfavored and earth shakers were triumphant and have managed to destroy Cairn. The Archon of Stone. Fallen. I thank you, Fatebinder. This was a long time coming. Cairn's betrayal was inexcusable. And a death sentence from a lawful land, or a lawful hand, is no more or less than he deserved. What's more, you are to be commended for resolving an Edict of Kuros and putting down an Archon at once. On to the next order of business. What happens to the Scarlet Chorus from here? The crops grown for our enemies will have withered on the vine. By now, the Archon's forces are clutching their stomachs and tightening their belts as we star them out. A fair reward for more than fair service to the region. To, for, to Legion. The Earthshakers of Forgebound conceived of this, and I can think of no wielder more deserving than you, Fatebinder. Oh! Hello! Fatebinder! No time for pleasantries or ceremony! Your spire is under attack! The Scarlet Corps have ramped up their offensive, and they mean to topple your stronghold, with you atop it if need be. I feared something like this might happen, an act of desperation from the voices of Narat. 
He's either too much of a coward to attack Iron Hearth, or his forces are too weak. Either way, you'll need to answer this threat with blood. I'll be off at once. Alright, what did we get? Was it Ashes Finery? A one-handed... Exquisite Mace. Eh. Not that cool. We also got the, um... Fragment from Karen's head. As an accessory. Plus two wits. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Alright, let's finish things with the voices of Nerat. Which stronghold has he at? The main one? Vendrian as well. Figures. But luckily we have the teleporter, so we should be able to um, just teleport to the top from the nearest spire, which should be Ocean Spire, right? Yay. To the mountain spire. And zap! Greetings, Fatebinder. No, not, not greetings. Greeting. That's fine, Irenius. Don't mind your grammar at all. Our oath-bound scouts alerted us to a chorus assault on your spire, and Lord Ash insisted we send aid at once. I've assembled a... The massive sculpture rumbles, shaking the masonry of the spire and sending her off balance. Wait, are you gonna topple my spire? That would be super rude. You what? Did you inadvertently unlock its true power? The orb in the center of the resonator spins with a push of some unseen force. Where the structure once exuded warmth, now it gives off a ferocious heat, ferocious heat that singes your face the longer you stare into it. A sound like music swarms the, in the air around the structure, but it's painful and disharmonious to your ears. I cure this hairy backside. That music! It's awful! Feels like my teeth are ripping their way out of my mouth! Don't you hear it? And it's your name! Listen real close and it's your name said over and over until it's just one mystic veil or wail. The spire is now fully awake. Its long dormant currents of energy dance to your presence. Feels like something is shaking the spire. The chorus can't pull off that sort of magic. What in Kyrus' name is going on? As the ruler of the Spire, I have a mystic link to this place. Give me a moment. I don't suppose this mystical Spire of yours has some warding magic or something of that ilk? Unshakable courage and superior training will only take it so far against that larger force. This Spire resonates to my voice. I'll shout to the valley that I have an edict from Kiros. That should send them running. Considering the average intellect and cunning of our foe, I think such a feint would at least thin the crowd. That was a good idea. Use the resonator. I shall. Let us see here. I mean, I feel like... This might be the way to proclaim edicts that I was wondering about last episode. As you touch the stone structure, your sense of the moment slows, and you feel the entirety of the tears at your fingertips. The spire stands ready to channel your will. Amazing! So, we should be going to this region. Ah! Have we unlocked edicts now? These are my edicts available right now. So do I learn the ones I take care of? I feel like... Haven't I broken all the edicts? Except the one over here. I should have more. But I guess this is the one we have to do. Wait, what was that? Was that like a pause edict? Where was that? Or issue edict, okay. Alright, so what do we want to do? The Edict of Stone isn't that great. They, the, um, Scarlet Chorus do like their fire magic. So that might be a good thing. Issue the Edict of Storms.
Take this, Scarlet Chorus. You messed with the wrong Fate Binder. And this pretty much confirms that um, Kyrus has the magic of spires back in the homeland. Pretty much. But she all or they, I don't know the gender of them, uh, are also immortal. Which, I mean, let's be honest, I want immortality, why not? What in Graven Ash's name? But, but Kyrus didn't give it to read. So, how did... Having broken the edict, I seem to be able to recreate it. In a limited fashion. You did that? But only Kiros can cast an edict. I assure you, that was my own magic at work. The Chorus have no idea what they just walked into. Binder, let us strike now. We must seize the moment, and swing their panic into a rout. Fatebinder, I'll get the carnage started. Join me when you are ready, and we'll deal with whatever rabble remains. Amazing! Alright, let's defeat the invaders! Ah, the edict rages on. Owned! And these blood chanters use uh, fire magic a lot. As well as I think it's emotions or something like that. Maybe atrophy. So this edict is gonna serve us well. What foul tricks are you playing such that the weather comes to your aid? I should thank you for separating the wheat from the chaff. The sight of seeing dozens struck dead by lightning made a good show to start the dead weights. Leaving the bravest with the privilege of tearing off your limbs, one joint at a time. She turns to her soldiers and lets out a primal howl, her warriors echoing the battle cry in dissonant tones. Oh, if I had a better reputation, I might have been able to, like, sway them. Fools! Did you do not hear me proclaim that edict? Either I cast that edict by myself, or did so with the Overlord's blessing. Think that through very carefully. Do not liken yourself to the Overlord. Your magic may have startled my weaker troops, but your magic is nothing my own blood chanter could not affect. Isn't that right? She looks to one of her mages with a nod of approval, but is met instead with a blanched look of fear, mouth agape in terror. Enough talk! You will be trampled and forgotten! Only the voices of Nirat will remember your name. I mean, you can try, but I am kind of powerful, let's be honest. I am the best fate finder around. Let's get the AoE started. Can I get the blood shender as well? I think so. I kind of want to get him down. Maybe you can use your... Uh, didn't you have a um, silence somewhere? Did you already use that? I hope I have that slotted in. Aura of Fear. Mm, maybe Card has it. Yeah, Withering Cloud. Let's silence you. That's gonna take care of a lot of things. But he seems to not be affected, right? More uh, arcane damage. Frightened. Fear. Did it not use silence? I'm pretty sure I used Silence, but it seems it didn't take. Must have resisted it. Now kill the Blood Chanter. Oh, Cart is taking a lot of damage. Oh, and they're getting reinforcements as well. Ebb! Do a light on the grave. Get that, um... Good lifesteal on everyone. I think that's the one, right? Or is it this one? No, it is this one. All enemy or party attacks will transfer health from enemies. It's a good one, a real good one. 
That's right, you filthy peasants! Run for your lives! Tell the rat what you saw here! The chorus is running in every direction, scattered to the winds as it were. The few brave enough to stand their ground against your edict of storms are dead. The day is ours! Leave the cleanup to me and my brethren. You should take your rightful place, perched atop the spire. No better way to savor this victory than with a commanding view of your enemy fleeing across the valley. I will do just that, but did Deathnell drop anything cool? I feel like he might have. Also, we can finally loot the, uh, ooh, Crimson Great Spear. We can finally loot the, uh, outskirts, maybe? No? Remember back when we first took this place, we got funneled in by a cutscene, and we couldn't loot this place. I guess we can now. Oh, never mind then. <laughs> Let's head back in. Shocked and demoralized by your display of power and the ease with which you dispatched a leader, the Scarlet Corps fighters lose their nerve and scattered in defeat. The survivors carry with them fearful murmurs of the powerful Archon Cart, a being of enormous might who can cast an edict with the same authority as the Overlord. Wait, is this like the ending? Confusion sets in across the realm. Amid the whispers and misinformation, one fact remains consistent. The Overlord's power has been challenged. You safely assume that such rumors are making their way back to Kiros. The high winds of your edict sweep the air, dashing debris across your spire. Torrential rain falls, hitting hard enough to bruise bare skin. Lightning strikes the ground, endangering anyone out in the open. It isn't long before the storm begins to wane, slowly falling from a gale to a light rainstorm, and after a few days it becomes a simple breeze. Eventually, the skies calm as your edict dissipates, releasing Vendrin's well from its grip. You gather your small council of closest allies and plan your next step from the safety of your spire. No sooner do you get started than Kaleo, Fatebinder of Tunon, pays a visit bearing an important message. So it's not the end! I feel like we have the um, trial of both the Disfavored and Scarlet Chorus to deal with. So I think that's gonna be uh, the last bit. I keep hearing about this little spire you've been calling your own. Now that you've slaughtered those who would take your lands, I think your claim is as official as it gets. Let me guess, you're here to investigate what just happened. Naturally. Two don't expect me to give you give a full report, but today I come bearing an important message. Not an edict, but commandments from the mouth of the Overlord all the same. No one's entirely sure what to make of you this day's cards. They all say you spoke an edict of storm. Not a proclamation of an edict of Kiros, but your own edict of storms. Your own mystical storm. You're no mere fate binder of that much we can be certain. You proclaimed and broken the Overlord's edict perhaps one too many times. If I had known you could do this when I first met you, I'd maybe have tried in earnest to kill you. I hope for the sake of Tyrannus that the right person has inherited this gift. I don't know what to make of you, Fatebinder. Proclaiming and breaking the Overlord's magic, claiming these awful towers. It should come as no surprise that an edict is within your grasp, but I still find room for surprise. You're powerful in ways that gang bosses and mages aren't. You commanded this place to do your bidding and unleash something incredible on the world. That isn't the work of a Fatebinder. If anything, it's the work of an Archon. Beast Woman will follow Alpha from here to ends of Tearlands and further still. We'll paw paw prowl deep into Cold North, hunting armies of Kiros at Alpha's side. Together, Shadowhunter and Alpha will slaughter whole of Prima's tribe. I don't have any idea how you're able to do this, but it isn't power that any scholar can wield. This is something else. You're not just some ambitious hedge mage who learned it out of a book. You're more like an Archon, where it just comes naturally. 
I always knew you'd be a delightful bit of trouble, but I didn't think you had a touch of the Overlord's power in you. Why didn't you tell me? You've known me a long time, my greatness shouldn't be a surprise. I mean, that seems kind of too, uh, proud. Uh, I genuinely didn't know I had it in me. You didn't know if it would work, and you decided to play with the arcane equivalent of a mounting tipping over. My confidence in you swells, Fatebinder. Thank you, Siren. I mean, I know you were sarcastic, but sure. It's only natural to have doubted yourself. The edicts have always been the magic of cures and cures alone. Anyone claiming to be able to cast an edict would be presumed crazy. And yet, a sane man watching what you just did would see the power of the Overlord in your voice. Curious. Suppose you have no reason to play the fool. I'll say that who, however it is you came into this power, know that you've drawn the attention of the Overlord. So, congratulations, I think? I come bearing orders directly from the Overlord. Curious has decreed two things. First, the Overlord has demanded that one and only one Archon is fit to rule the tears. To that end, the Archons are to settle through death and dominance who is the one Archon fit to inherit the tears. So, I was just given permission to kill or subjugate the Archons? Oh, it gets better than that. With a smile, she tosses a small bit of metal your way, and when it's in your hand, you recognize it as a small brooch or brooch in the style of Kyrus's insignia. Kyrus has decreed you are the newest Archon. So the other Archons now have orders to control or destroy you, and the other way around. See? This is why I try to avoid getting Kyrus's attention. And what if we don't fight? Now, I don't want to ignore the order, but I do want to subjugate, um, Graven Ash at least, if I can. And to be clear, this is a command and not an edict. Correct. There is no edict backing this order. Alright. Curious knows, rightly so, that enmities, new and old, will drive the Archons to mutual destruction. I have a close alliance with Grave and Ash. What about the court, actually? What do Toon and the Blood and Mark think of this? As per usual, Toon has the emotional range of Pumis, but Blood and Mark seems almost giddy. Alright. What about my alliance with Grave and Ash? Can I use it to convince him? Keep in mind, the order is all about is that all must submit to one Archon or die. Alright, seems great. That will be all. Thank you. First step is deciding you won't bow to one of the other Archons. I wish you the best of luck in your upcoming struggle. Know that when you came for Blood Mark and Tunon, I and the other Fate Binders won't interfere. Oh yeah, we gotta deal with Fate or Blood Mark and Tunon as well. They're Archons. I totally forgot about that. Let's get one thing clear. I want no part of this little contest. Fatebinder, sorry Archon, I bow to you. The rest of you madmen can fight over the right to rule this mountainous shithole. Thank you, Siren. Just don't let Nerat get away with a bat of the eyelashes and a polite surrender. A question me and the other binders have been asking. Can you do this again? Nunaval believes in you, another who will shall remain nameless takes the more cynical stance that the Overlord has a hand so far up your ass she can puppet your mouth and you couldn't cast a second edict if you tried. Me? I think you have it in you. Or I like the idea of proclaiming an edict of yours someday. I have something in mind for the voices of Nerat. Oh, the tears are about to get a lot more interesting with that attitude. I can taste their lamentations already. When you rule Tyrannus, look me up. If you're successful, I know I'll be in need of a new Archon to serve. 
I know I'm mostly sober, but just so we're clear, you did just issue an edict, right? First you cast an edict, then this full-on War of Archons. This whole chapter of the Chronicle is... it's reading like fiction. So Karis has ordered all the Archons to fight it out, until only the strongest remain. I think we can now safely say that the Scarlet Core's philosophy has been vindicated. I mean, that's true, actually. A rumbling mutter stirs from under Barrett's helmet, devoid of any cogent words. Alpha birthed own words of power like humans Prima called Kiros. It's better mystic than Broodmother's uh, to kill in shadows. Then Stone Stalker's Hundred Blood, then Beast Woman Archon slaughtered by Markin's shadows. Kills in shadows, new Alpha m was most powerful human in whole of Tearslands. No, this was not wrong. Well, that's thing. All this talk of you being a second coming of the Overlord, and I almost forgot my duties. This is a court summons from Blood and Mark, Tuna's assassin. I suggest you read it carefully as part of your preparations. Your survival may depend on it. Good luck, Archon. Jesus! <sighs> Cacophony is unlocked. That's where the voices are, hold up. Fatebinder! Archon! The Great Janner has pulled his troop back to Iron Hearth. Soon we make our final push into the Stone Sea and the heart of Scarlet Core's power. The voices of Nerad is weak, and the path to Cacophony is clear. The Archon is also aware of what happened at Vendrian's Well. I'm sure he wants to discuss the, discuss the matter in person. I'll head over there straight away. Get over there. I'm actually going to try to ally with him. I mean, if possible, I can make... I, I highly doubt it, but if I can make um, the voices bow down, that might be an issue or might be an option, but I highly doubt it. We have a mis mission or missive from Blood and Mark. Kid, I take it you're aware of the Overlord's latest decree. If not, let me give it to you straight. Now's a bad time to be an Archon of the Tears. Since most likely I'll be the one to cut you down, I thought I'd first explain, it's not my choice. But if it was, I would still choose to kill you. See you soon, Blood and Mark. Say something cordial. Blood and Mark seems to like that, being nice to him. Respectful. I must sincerely thank you for the forward warning. Please know that I have indeed taken your words to heart and as such, return the following in reply. Certainly, I would not expect you to follow me without first testing my mettle. If we must slay each other, so be it. I respect your prowess and will stand my ground if a duel is what you desire. But I would ask that you consider instead pledging your blade to me, rather than aiming it at my throat. This curse decree insists that we kill each other, or merely that one should best the other. Yes, send that. Alright! So the grand melee is about to begin. I think we're gonna head over to Graven Ash first, hopefully secure his allegiance, and then go for the voices of Nerat, and then two non and blood and mark. However, that is gonna be tell for the day. If you like this series and enjoy the video, hit that thumbs up and leave a comment below. And subscribe if you haven't already. Every little thing helps to grow the channel. And thank you for watching. I will see you guys next time.